Thank you for joining PC View Tutorials. In this tutorial, we'll discuss the Trend Viewer mechanisms, how to configure a Trend Viewer, and the Trend Viewer in runtime. Let's imagine you're developing a project for a big water treatment station. The communication has been validated, the variables are created and connected, and you've already developed a nice interface with the graphical tools and libraries coming within PC View. One point left for the project to be ready is to offer a way to help the operator to monitor trends for all the values that this complex process requires. What your customer would probably expect to have is a screen with a powerful trend viewer to be able to monitor up to eight different trends for real-time or historical values with a fully customizable legend which allows for example the operator to select the variable to be displayed hide or show a trend or a scale and change some properties such as the color the real-time value the description of the unit of variables are some of the many different types of information that can be displayed in the legend. The operator can also request trends for a specific period of time from the configurable toolbar. Some statistics can be then read from the legend. It is also possible to zoom a particular area or a particular period of time and to use a cursor to get a value from a curve. Your customer would probably enjoy to be able to display generic trend viewer to monitor information for specific objects such as the flow meter trend. This is one of the features we'll discuss in the advanced tutorial. As you can see, the trend viewer PC View is able to meet the constraints of your customer and we're going to show you now how easy it is to configure it. Let's start with the trend screen. You can insert a trend viewer from the insert menu and it's possible to insert different trend viewers in the same screen and in the same project. As you can see, the trend viewer has many properties. The first step is to select the variables to be displayed from the variable tree. For example, this variable. If the variable has been configured to be archived as a trend, as discussed in the tutorial's archives basics, you will be able to display the historical trend for this variable. You can then modify the appearance of the corresponding trace with the color, the thickness, different styles, and a specific marker like this one. And you can also select one of the three types of trace. Here we select the single line type. You can change here the min max range of the variable within the trace and by default the variables properties are at runtime are used. It's also possible to display a scale for the trend. It's important to note that it's also possible to change these parameters in runtime either from a SCADA basic program or from the legend. We define now several other variables to be displayed. And that's it. The display tab is used to define the way the trends will be displayed. You can change some of the graphical standard settings such as a display a toolbar or a scroll bar or display a legend. We'll discuss the legend later in this tutorial. And it's also possible to configure the period displayed, the buffer size and the time capacity as well as the start mode for the viewer. But what does that mean exactly and how does it work? Each trend viewer contains a configurable display buffer where the values for each trace are stored. When the mimic opens, the buffer is empty and starts to fill with the real-time points. When the mimic is closed, the buffer is emptied unless the mimic has the property cache enabled. The display buffer is defined with two adjustable parameters. The buffer size defines a maximum number of values which may be recorded in the display buffer. Normally, this will be left at the default value of 10,000. However, if the application has any special requirements, for example, reducing the amount of memory required, this property may be changed. 
and the time capacity, which is the maximum period for which the display buffer will retain values for the traces. Values are discarded when either the time capacity is reached or the display buffer is full. You can also define the period of time for the trend display. The trend viewer operates in three distinct modes. The run mode displays the trend in real time, and the trend viewer focuses on the right-hand position and displays the points that are coming in. The display buffer temporarily records values for the traces, giving the user a limited ability to scroll back in time. The pause mode displays the recent points recorded in the display buffer. The trend viewer can move its focus within the buffer to display points more recent than now minus time capacity. The historic mode displays recorded data extracted from the archive files. The trend viewer adjusts the period to the time capacity value. In our example, we left the default values. We check the option Display Time Information to display the time at the start and end of the chart, which is very useful. One of the smart functionalities of the Trend Viewer is the legend used to display and control configurable information about each curve in runtime. To use the legend, tick Display Legend and open the Legend tab. In the right list, there's a large selection of properties available to be displayed. From this list, you can select on any property and double-click on it to add it to the list of the displayed properties on the left, as shown here. We can also add the variable name, its real-time value, its cursor value, the variable description and its unit, and some statistical information such as min, max, and average values used for historical trend values. It's also possible to display a custom value or user value defined here, such as a text attribute of a variable. You can then change the order of the column display with the arrows here. As you probably noticed, some properties have a checkbox. Tick it if you want to be able to change the property in runtime from the legend. For example, we'd like to hide or show the curve so visible property is ticked. And now the legend is ready. The other tabs will be discussed in the advanced tutorial. Click OK to validate, and you can resize and move the trend viewer anywhere in your mimic as any other object within PC View. Switch in runtime, and here it is, our trend viewer is running. As configured by default, the trend viewer is in run mode. You can see here the time information bar for the trend display width, the start time and the end time of the display period, the displayed period time, and the subdivision time. The scroll bar here is used to move the trend viewer display within the buffer. The size of the scroll bar slider changes to reflect the amount of data stored in the buffer. As you can see, when you scroll the trend display, the viewer switches automatically in pause mode as shown here. It's possible to explode or implode the time axis, and you can then switch back in run mode with a click on the green arrow. To display the legend, click at the bottom of the trend viewer and drag the legend up as shown. Here's the legend. We can see all the information configured. You can resize the columns, right click on the headers, and save and lock the column size. For each curve, you can hide or show the curve as well as the scale. Change the color or select a new marker. You can also select a variable from the variable selector. The real-time values are displayed here. From the toolbar, you can select a period of time to display historical trends. You can see in the legend, statistical data. From the toolbar, you can select a zoom mode for a specific area or for a specific time period. For example, we zoom a specific area. With the cursor mode, you can then select a specific point on the trend. You can see the value and the timestamp on the axis as well as the value in the legend. Depending on the authorization from the Execution tab, if you right-click on the toolbar, you can change its position and even its content. 
Our trend screen is now ready. And thank you for joining PCView Solutions Tutorials.